All right, so we're continuing on with my playlist on Chrome DevTools. Today, I want to talk about the Application tab. So basically, anything having to do with data or file storage in the browser. All right, so I've built a pretty basic website just built on top of what I've used in the previous videos. In this one, I have added a bunch of icons. I've added a web manifest file. Uh, so you're building a progressive web app. You need a manifest file. I've got a pretty simple service worker added in here. And then my script, I'm dealing with a whole bunch of the built-in storage stuff. So uh, I think I've got it in the notes right here. Yeah. So cookies, local storage. This is local storage and session storage. Index DB, uh, the back forward cache, and some other stuff that we're going to look at right now. All right, so in my browser, taking a look at this, the application tab. This is what we're looking at here specifically today. So inside of here, storage. Anytime you've got a web page um, and you want to clear stuff out as the developer, best place to go, application, clear site data. This button right here clears out pretty much everything you've got checked here. So I'm nuking the cache all the cookies, WebSQL, IndexedDB, local and session storage, service workers, the manifest, all these things for this origin. It's not everything in the browser. That's something that a user might do. They'll go into the settings for the browser and they'll say, hey, I want to delete all the history, the cookies and all that stuff. So they can do that across origins, across domains. As a developer, I don't want to do that necessarily. If I'm building something and I'm working with storage of files or data, I want to be able to control that for my local host origin. And that's what we're doing here. With all of these settings, we're able to control that. So storage, this is where we clear it out. So that just gets rid of absolutely everything that we've got. Simple enough. The manifest. Well, the manifest.json file, there it is. This is the link tag back here in the browser. If we look right here, there's my link tag for the manifest file. And I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about the technologies behind this. It's more the dev tools and what we can do in here. So the manifest gives us the details that were defined inside of here. Uh, these icons that I've got, there's a link right here in the page for the real favicon generator. This website is what I use to um, build the package with this sample icon. So all the details that we needed, all the icons that we needed for this web manifest came from there if you want to generate your own. Uh, the code, link to down in the description, the code just is the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and the manifest file, all the text stuff. But if you want the icons too, you can use this link to generate your own set. Okay, service workers. I have a service worker inside of here. Now, with service workers, we often want to... Um, well, this one actually has been deleted. Um, in my script, I have to click once on the body, and then it's going to add bits of data in all these different areas. So the service worker, I now have one that is installed and activated and running. If I want to get rid of this, I can stop it if I want. Okay, so it's not running right now. Clicking again, we've got it. Um, same thing, so we're not installing it again. I can click start to reactivate it. So stop, start. It's like you're pausing this thing. Unregister. This is getting rid of it. This is deleting the service worker. So unregister. There we go. We can see it is deleted. This is the file right here. And up here at the top, we've got some options for, hey, let's pretend that we're currently offline and then I can refresh the page and see what happens if my service worker does anything with that. My update on reload means if I have deleted it, which I have here, when I refresh, it's going to, oh yeah, I have to click to register it. There we go. So normally when the web page loads, that is when you would install your service worker. Um, this update on reload means every time that you refresh your page, it's going to try to reinstall the service worker. It'll say, okay, I've got a new version of the service worker. I'm going to install it. The update is sort of the automatic. If I had another service worker here, like this is the same one. If I click here, it doesn't actually put another one in here. But if it did put one in here, 
you'd have one that is installed and activated and running. You'd have another one that's installed but not activated yet. So you can update to have it automatically do the next one, or there's a link that will show up beside it saying, skip waiting. I don't want to wait. I want to activate this one right now. Okay, so this is service workers. We have that in this tab right here. Um, I'm going to go into the storage and delete everything again here, just so I'm starting with a, a blank tab. There we go. A blank slate. Local storage and session storage, same thing. You can save data using keys and values. Right now there's nothing until I click. There we go. Now I've got the same data in both places. This is just what I'm doing in my script. Uh, so if you want to look at the JavaScript and see how I'm saving it, you have the sample right there. The difference between the two of them is that session storage, when you leave the page, when you've left the domain, when you close the browser, close the tab, it says, oh, okay, the session's over. You're done with this website. So I will clear this out automatically for you. Whereas local storage will stay for an indeterminate amount of time, depending on whether you're on mobile, you're on desktop, if you're uh, working on iOS or Android, it's different amounts of time. About the, the shortest period of time is on iOS. You'll get about a week, maybe two weeks worth of storage time where if it's not used, it will be deleted. IndexedDB, another way to store it. So we have data stores that we create. And so I created one called My Data Store. This is the current version of it. Uh, I can refresh that. I can delete this database from here. But if I click on the arrow tab, go in, here's the actual data that's being saved inside of here. So I clicked again. It warns me, maybe stale, so I can refresh this. There we go. And every time I click, what I'm doing is I'm adding another record into here. And each one of these things, again, it's the same data that I'm saving in local storage. It's just I can use the key as an identifier and search through here for the matching key. There's commands for doing that. So index DB, it's a document database type database that you've got locally. Web SQL is still here, but this has been deprecated. Um, it wasn't ever supported by all the browsers. It was a SQL relational database syntax that you could use. Um, it's running SQL Lite in the browser, but because it never got supported everywhere, it's been deprecated. It's still in a couple browsers, but really IndexedDB. If you want to create a local database, this is how to do it. So local storage again. So it's only on this computer, just like local storage and session storage, the service worker. These are things that are on the user's computer. They're not up on a server somewhere. They're not being shared anywhere. It's just on this computer that I'm working on right now. Cookies. So small amounts of data. And again, it's all tied to an origin. So I'm saving the same data here in a cookie as I have in local storage and session storage and in IndexedDB. It's the same data in all these places. IndexedDB, I'm saving multiple rows, whereas for these two, I'm just overwriting this one key with the one value. Same thing with cookies. It's the one key, the one value. Now, shared storage. Um, This is something that um, is still kind of in beta. It's not supported everywhere, not even in Chrome. It's being able to share storage across multiple origins. So that's still under development. Now, cache storage, this is fully supported everywhere. This is the ability to save files. Now, it can be used from a service worker. It can also be used from uh, just your regular script for your page. In both places, we can save files. So you create a request object as the key, and then the response object containing the file is what gets saved inside of here. So you can have backups of files. This is very useful for progressive web apps, for working with service workers. You save the files here for your website. Then if you go offline, you can get them from here and having to, instead of having to fetch them from a server someplace when you have no internet connection. Uh, down here at the bottom, we have a few other things. So those are the primary ones. Uh, just before I move on, uh, service workers, local storage, session storage, index DB, cookies, and the cache. Those are your primary sources for saving data or files. 
background services. Now, most of this list is, again, stuff that is not supported everywhere. So we have uh, the back forward cache. This is snapshots of pages. So in order to try and make things run a little bit faster, Chrome, when you're navigating away from a page, takes a snapshot of what the screen is, what the content of the page is, so that when you hit the back button and go back to it, it can load that. It'll say, okay, I already know in memory what this page was supposed to look at. But there are things that will interfere with it. They're talking about this eligibility here. This has to do is with, if you've got web sockets running on the page, that can interfere with what the page looks at. It's going to say, okay, I can't really guess because you're changing the page with this web socket. Um, the other thing that can interfere with that is if you have uh, listeners for before unload or on the unload event, if there's things that are happening as the user leaves, that interferes with this and it's not going to uh, save these snapshots for you. That's the back forward cache. Now, background fetch, background sync, periodic background sync, not supported everywhere, but it's the ability to go and fetch more data, fetch things on a regular basis, make sure that there's updated data coming from some online source. So uh, rest fetch calls being made from the service worker in the background, uh, maybe when the page is in the background, when the page is not being used. So it can run a task as long as it's not completely shut down, it will be able to do these background things. But again, not everywhere. One thing, this push messaging, this is one thing that is now supported as of, uh, I don't know, it was a couple of months ago, a month, two months ago, that iOS finally started supporting push messaging. So now we have that across all the major browsers. We can do push notifications and notifications, again, works here as well. And the push messaging, those two things working together to let you push from a server, the web page gets registered, push notification coming from the server, coming to the browser, and then you're displaying the notification. So that is tied to origins. It's tied to identifying the browser. And we can now do that everywhere. Payment handler. Uh, this is, again, a Chrome only thing right now, but it has to do with making pre-authorizations on payments. So you want to use a credit card for something. Well, before the charge is actually finalized, there's a pre-authorization process where you send in a request saying, okay, this person would like to make this purchase. If they wanted to, if they say to go ahead, would they be able to? And then that transaction is kind of registered and the information is saved to say, okay, yes, we know that they may make this purchase. We'll guarantee space on the credit card for that purchase or the debit card for that purchase so that it can be used later on. This is, uh, again, Chromium only, uh, but something that we do have here. So lots and lots and lots of very useful stuff for developers. Better than the tools that just the, the average user is going to use in their settings to clear off the cache, we can come in here and pick and choose what it is that we want to clear. And when we're clearing it, it's not for the whole browser. It is for just this specific origin. And one other thing to note here, it'll tell you how much storage is available. All right, so that is it. Um, and sorry, in addition to knowing what it is, you can uh, change that value to say, okay, let's pretend that we're on a device that only has you know, 200 megabytes, that's all that's available. And then you can test it to see what is going to happen on the page when that happens as you try to save files. So very useful thing as well. All right, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. I answer as many as I have time for. And as always, thanks for watching.